what is an intercooler? Does an intercooler add power to the engine? And is an intercooler suitable for all engine types? Well, if you have a turbocharged engine, the intercooler makes a big difference to the power that you get. So we're just going to look into the mysteries of the intercooler and intercooler upgrades and give you an idea on how much power you're potentially gaining or losing when you upgrade the intercooler on your car. We're going to discuss how intercoolers work, why we need them, and the problems associated with having an intercooler. And there's also a couple of types of intercooler as well, which we'll be discussing. Let's think about why we need an intercooler on our engine. If you have any form of air compressor, be it a supercharger or turbocharger, the act of compressing air is going to add temperature to the air. You've probably noticed that as you pump your tire up, the nozzle starts to get very hot. And that really just demonstrates what's happening when we compress air. We're adding heat to the air. The act of compressing the air is forcing those molecules to rub against each other and generates more heat within the air charge. Now, the colder the air is, the more oxygen it contains. So although you're compressing the air and you're getting more air into the engine, if that air is much hotter, it's going to be less dense. It's going to carry less oxygen. You're going to burn less fuel and you'll be down on power. So what the intercooler does, it takes this hot intake charge of compressed air and it exposes that to the ambient temperature where it is cooled and the intake temperature is lowered. So you've potentially got more power there. The two types of intercooler are air to air intercooler and water intercoolers or air to water intercoolers. The air to water intercoolers basically have a radiator circuit with a coolant that flows around Around, and that then is cooled by the ambient temperature somewhere else in the car, typically at the front. It requires less ducting and less pipe work to have these water intercoolers, and they're very, very efficient. They work extremely well. We can see why manufacturers are moving over to that. The Volkswagen Group in particular on their 1.4, 1.5 TFSIs have now an water intercooler on the front of the intake. Pretty much the last area the air goes through is this radiator filled with coolant that lowers the intake temperature and that works quite well. With the traditional air to air intercoolers, you basically extend the pipework from the turbocharger to the engine and somewhere at the front of the engine, you've got a big radiator where the intake air that is hot runs through and it's exposed to the cooler ambient air as the car moves along and that lowers the temperature of the intake. Mechanically that is very very simple, manufacturers have been doing that for years, it's very very effective. But what are the power gains from an intercooler, what are the problems associated with having an intercooler on the car? The cooler the intake temperature the more power you make. What is the actual difference? Well if we take an engine, a 200 horsepower engine as an example and we just look at some different temperatures now, I'm going to be working in Celsius. I know some of you are going to be working in Fahrenheit, but just take the relative difference in temperature because that's what we're looking at here. At 75 degrees Celsius, the power drops to around 181 horsepower. Your quarter mile time with that setup would be 16.47 seconds. If the intake was even warmer than that at 95 Celsius, the power would drop further to 176 horsepower. Remember, we started off with a potential 200 horsepower and your quarter mile time is down to 16.62 seconds. So not having an intercooler, you will see these temperatures of 75 to 95 degrees Celsius at the intake. So straight away, you're going to be down on power. When we start adding an intercooler, depending on how efficient the intercooler is, you start to see that power you've lost coming back. So don't think of the intercooler as something that's adding power. It's really restoring power that's been lost by the act of heating up the air as it was compressed. With an intercooler at 35 degrees Celsius on the intake temperature, you're looking at a 16.05 second quarter mile time and on the dyno, you'll be knocking out about 196 horsepower. You take the temperature down to 24 degrees, you're looking at a 15.95 second quarter mile time, and the dyno will show you're getting about 199.7 horsepower on that. So you're pretty much up to the 200 horsepower spec of the engine. If you can reduce the temperature to 12 degrees, 
you're looking at a 15.85 second quarter mile time. So it's shaving that little bit more time off the quarter mile. And you're rated now at 204 horsepower. Drop it another two degrees to 10 Celsius. You're looking at 15.83 seconds quarter mile time. And your peak power will be about 204.3 horsepower. So there's certainly an element of diminishing returns. The cooler it gets, the less incremental the power increase is. And just looking at the real world times, at 75 degrees, your quarter mile was 16.47 seconds. At 10 degrees, your quarter mile time is 15.83 seconds. So that's under two seconds difference on the quarter mile. In the real world, will you notice that? Well, if you're in a track day environment or a race environment, you would certainly appreciate every little fraction of a second you can get off the quarter mile time. But in day to day driving, most drivers are not going to notice that sort of power difference. That's often the difference you get between driving on a warm, sunny day at noon and driving in cooler air that you get at the evening. So all the figures we've quoted here assume that 200 horsepower base power level an average weight car, 0% humidity and 29.101 Hg of air pressure. So there's lots of factors that come into the amount of power that a car produces. So is it worth upgrading your intercooler? Well, we need really to talk about the elephant in the room, and that is the problem of heat soak. So the intercooler is made of metal. It's got hot air from the intake going through it, and it's exposing that to the outside cooler air temperature. Now, the metal on that intercooler is going to warm up. In this graph, we have a line that denotes the intake temperature, which also correlates to power. But notice what happens as the intercooler starts warming up. The effect you get from the intercooler, the cooling effect, drops off, and so does power which means that if you only rarely go into the upper part of the RPM range, it's going to cope with that quite well. But if you're demanding a lot from the turbo, if it's boosting a lot of air into the engine and there's a lot of heat building up in the system, it's going to tail off quite quickly and you're going to be sacrificing some of the potential power from your engine. Manufacturers often go for the minimum sized intercooler they can get away with. They want to keep the manufacturing costs low. In day-to-day -day driving, it probably doesn't matter that much. You're only using bursts of acceleration. The roads are pretty congested. I don't know if you've noticed that. But when you start getting into the spirited driving, the track day driving, there's a lot more heat being produced. And at that point, you start to suffer from heat soak. At this point, the intake temperature may well increase 10, 15, 20 degrees Celsius. But at that point, you're not getting the power that you were getting originally. Upgrading to a larger intercooler can actually restore some of that lost power. There's also an element of drag that's created with the intercooler. The air is flowing through the intercooler, which is a radiator. You want that air to spend a little bit of time in the intercooler. The ambient air is flowing through it or the water is flowing through it, allowing that intake temperature to cool down. With intercooler size, we can't really say that large intercoolers restrict the airflow because in most instances, that's just not true. If you've got a big intercooler, the air will flow more freely through it. But the internal design of the intercooler will have a bearing on how efficient it is at letting the air flow through it. In real world terms, the intercooler is making up for that lost power. But if we get our sums wrong, we could specify an intercooler that's of an incorrect size and shape, and it's creating a lot more drag on our system and we'd potentially be losing power most of the time, but only getting the benefits of the intercooler when we've been running hot for some period of time. When you're choosing an intercooler, it's fair to say that if you have an intercooler that's too small, that is going to negatively affect performance. Imagine the intercooler is that radiator cooling down the intake charge. If the intercooler is just not up to the job, it's going to reach the point of heat soak more quickly, which means you'll be down on power at an earlier point than you would if you had a larger intercooler. But it would also be wrong to say to go deeper and longer with the intercooler. But what you really want is most of the intercooler exposed to the air. So in general, a taller intercooler gives greater cooling capacity than maybe a deeper one or a slightly wider one fitted to the car. Choosing an intercooler is quite an important step in a turbo setup. It won't add power, but it prevents you from 
losing power. It maximizes that intake charge and gives you the best chance of making your power goals. And if the intercooler is too small and it's just not up to the job, it's going to warm up and it's not going to be very effective at cooling down the intake charge at all. So I hope this video has just cleared up some of the mysteries surrounding intercoolers. We take it for granted that most of our turbocharged engines have them. They're certainly not worth fitting to a naturally aspirated engine because the intake temperature is already at the ambient air temperature you're not going to make any substantial reduction on that. There are various methods though with intercooler setups where you can spray onto the intercooler, water spray, methanol sprays. We've seen people using CO2, nitrous, various other setups to cool the intercooler itself. I've even seen people with blocks of ice that have been wedged around the intercooler to reduce those intake temperatures. So it all helps, but we're really talking about minor differences to the overall power that we get. So if you've enjoyed this video, please boot the like button. That really does help us to get out there. We're still only a small channel. I'm just a one man operation. I really do appreciate your support. Also, if you could subscribe to the channel, that sends the algorithm a message and gets us a little bit more exposure for our videos. And I've lined this video and this playlist up for you that you should find really interesting. Thanks for watching. See you in these next videos.